on today's Locked On Senators. Four straight wins going into the All-Star break. We'll discuss how the Sens were able to beat the Montreal Canadiens 5-4 in overtime. And we have a very special guest. It's Claire Hanna from TSN. She tells us how she became a sports broadcaster, how she got the job covering the Ottawa Senators, and more. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started today. This is the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators podcast. Welcome inside episode 726 of the Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Piller up in the Blue Mountains, today is Wednesday, February 1st. And Pilsy, I have a question for you that I've been thinking about all night long. Who is the majority owner of the Montreal Canadiens? Is it the Senators who have now won five straight head-to-head meetings? Is it the captain, Brady Kachuk? Or is it kids are watching, Tim Stutzla? (laughs) I mean, all three of those are owners of the Montreal Canadiens. Who owns more? I'd have to go with Brady Kachuk here, Ross, because five of Brady's 18 game-winning goals in his short career are up against the Montreal Canadiens. And... Man, if only the Habs had an opportunity to draft Brady. Oh, yes, they did. But they got a really good player in... Oh, Uh. no, they didn't. But speaking about Brady Kachuk Ross, game-winning goals. It's kind of his thing. He's now third on the all-time list of Ottawa Senators franchise players in game-winning goals. Five behind Martin Havlat. One behind Jason Spezza. He has 18 game-winning goals in his career. He only needs five more to pass Havlat. Maybe that happens sooner rather than later as this guy comes up clutch. That is an unreal stat. Now, we know Alfie's still the the crown jewel, 69 game-winning goals with the Ottawa Senators. But in terms of putting that display in their first five seasons with the Sens, super impressive that he is where he is on that list. So he, he's going to have... You think he's got five more in him this year? I don't know. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for uh, putting the caveat on that stat. First five seasons. But yeah, I think he could get it done. I think he could. If he gets five more game winning goals, we might have to pull up the standings uh, every once in a while because that <laughs> team is absolutely rolling through the rest of the season. But going into the break, it's just awesome that now they're going to have the good vibes rolling in because could you imagine? And we're kind of on the fence about this because yesterday we discussed, hey, maybe the break should have happened after the Winnipeg game. The conversations at the whiteboard could have been longer than 12 minutes. They would have had a week, but they also would have been really upset. You saw Claude Giroux beside himself after that Winnipeg game. Now, at least they're going into a break. Sure, you'd love to continue because you're winning games. It feels good. Keep, Keep the ball rolling. But at least now, as players disperse, whether they're going on vacation or, in Brady's case, to South Florida for the All-Star game, they're in a good mood. They're feeling good. And most importantly for a young team, they have the confidence that they can win games. Now, my caveat is, is it faux? Is it false? Is it false hope because you're playing straight up an awful team already, but an awful team that's missing half their roster, right? Like, there is that note of the Montreal Canadiens. And you can't, like, it's great rivalry and the double bird flipped at Timmy all time. (laughs) Great stuff. Four points for Tim Stutzla. Just uh, another great game for him. Matthew Joseph, that spinorama pass at the blue line, looking like Patty Kane out there. It was ridiculous. But all in all, we have to keep that in focus. And the the Leafs just, they have trouble to send sometimes. It's the way it goes. So beating the Islanders, they couldn't score a goal whether it was against Ottawa or elsewise, like this next stretch now, but at least it's gotten us rejuvenated because they've got Edmonton, Calgary at the Islanders back to back. And then 
boots on the ground, Pilsy, on Ooh. February 17th against another awful team. So you think you win three out of four of those games. Now all of a sudden we're, we're going to be talking. We're going to be thinking a little bit more long-term. But Pilsy, that game against the Chicago Blackhawks, you up to anything that day? <laughs> I'm up to a lot of things that day, Ross, because it's not just any old Friday night game. It's the Chris Neal jersey retirement night, so number 25 going to the Raptors. We said all along, Ross, as soon as the date was announced, we told you guys we're going to make it out for that game. Ross is flying in from Winnipeg. I'm making the drive from Collingwood. And we're working with our good friends over at the Glebe Central Pub. We are doing our first ever live show at the bar. And Ross, tell these good people some more information about our event. Why would I tell them? When I can show them at Doodling Daryl, he's done it again, folks. Boots on the bus. Of course, our shuttle with the Glebe Central Pub leaves at 540 sharp. We're going to be in our seats, ready to go for the pregame ceremony at 7. Live show starts at 445. We encourage you to be at the bar by 4 p.m. Get a round of drinks. Have some fun. It's not going to be a show like this where Pilsy and I just banter. It's going to be as interactive as possible. Prizes to be won. Boots on the bus on the way. And I just want to zoom in and give Daryl some some credit because we know doodling Daryl, it's all in the details, okay? Let's start at the top. Of course, the Glebe Central Pub presents Locked On Senators live show. Pil- Your positive Pillsy patch makes me smile every time I see it. <laughs> That's all time. Drinking out of a boot. We know he is the boots on the ground yes. phenomenon himself. That's all time. Bad day to be a Molson. I have so much garlic sauce coming out of my shawarma palace. <laughs> that is awesome. Of course, you're holding the Chris Neal jersey retirement, yeah. the banner, all time. The buses, the convoy of buses here, Pilsy, gets me so fired up. I don't break for Leafs. Now, we've got my boy Max coming with us. I don't know if that's what the reference is here, but I'm going to I'm gonna act like it is because I think that's an all-time kind of – move to to mix a little contrast in there mad max and then yep. veronica vaughn shuttle i think that's from billy madison isn't it, is. it yeah that's uh chris farley driving the bus amazing so the convoy will be leaving the glebe central pub at 5 40 you can get your tickets online at the glebe central pub.com slash online store a little boo-boo they said february 17 2022 i can confirm those tickets are for 2023 So go get them below, and you can find the link directly on our link tree. You can find that on Twitter. So we just wanted to fire that up. Really excited, really fired up, not only for that, Pilsy, but for what's coming up on this show with Claire Hanna joining us. It was a long time coming, but glad we could make it work. Yeah, she is just such a a positive person. Uh, Like You can feel her energy through the screen, Ross, so we are very excited to talk with her in. I think it's a good uh, interview for people that are thinking about becoming broadcasters to kind of shed some light. It's not like Claire just started this last year and now she's covering the sense. It's a lot of work and a lot of dedication and a lot of kind of traveling to different spots and working in small Canadian towns. So she's put the work in and you can tell as she is a true pro. All that's coming up. Keep it locked on Senators wherever you download your podcasts. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. We are so excited about our new sports book. They are the official sports book partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. And for a good reason, they're the number one sports book in America. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They're going to hook you up with great features. For our American friends, new customers, get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Amazing. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Ross, they got all the best bets from money line, puck line, over under, player props, whatever you like, they got it. And you can have even bigger chance of bigger payouts with same game parlays. Ross, I have a new FanDuel bet that I'm going to start sprinkling some shekels on. And it would have hit last night if I was aware of it, but now I am. FanDuel does their first to five bet. And if you're watching on TSN, they have the banner that comes up. First team to get five shots on goal, and you hit. I should have done that with the Sens up against the Habs. So that's going to be something I'm going to be watching. The FanDuel first to five for hockey. We love to see it. So 
Get started today, guys. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose, at fanduel.com slash locked on. It's all in an app. It's safe. It's easy to use. It's secure. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. Now let me talk about my happy place, my favorite place on planet Earth, somewhere that I will be enjoying euphorically in two weeks' time. It's Shawarma Palace. You can find them at any of their nine Ottawa locations. Shawarma Palace not only knows that great food sells, they also know that big portions sell. The most economical thing you can do in today's day and age is get your food at Shawarma Palace. Yes, it's a great place to go for a quick bite, whether it's a sandwich or platter. Good luck eating it all in one sitting. But you can even go there and get things for home too and reheat it, and it's all great food at Shawarma Palace. It's been Ottawa's best place for Shawarma since 1997. They've stood the test of time. They're also huge Sens fans, so you're supporting a business that supports local and supports the Ottawa Senators. So check them out, Shawarma Palace. You can find them on Rideau Street near Augusta, on Bank Street near McLeod, which is where the baseball town is for those of you, the old Tommy and Lafave. A little throwback there, right around the corner from there. You can also find them all over town. Orleans, they've got a nice big shop in Orleans. And opening soon at the Saint Laurent Food Court. So check them out today. You're among family and friends at Shawarma Palace. And remember that Ottawa Senators game days taste better at Shawarma Palace. We love our friends at Shawarma Palace, and we know you will too. Check them out today. Shawarma Palace, eat like a royal. All right, now here she is, our Future friend of the show, no question about that. Here is TSN reporter Claire Hanna. All right, we now welcome on a very, very special guest. It's been a long time coming, but we finally got her. It's Claire Hanna. You can find her on TSN covering all things Ottawa. She's got a former life before that that we find very interesting and want to get into, (laughs) but we are extremely excited to welcome you to the show. How are you doing today, Claire? I'm awesome. I'm so happy we all linked up. Okay, you guys are in high demand too. I'm not the only one who has a tough schedule. We all have tough schedules, so we made the stars align. We certainly did, and great timing as well with the Senators starting an 11-day break. What have you been doing the last couple of weeks, though? Because we've been stuck with the Sportsnet broadcast. <laughs> well, I still go to most of the home games, but it's definitely a little trickier. I am trying to think about what I have done this past little while. Um well, I mean, I don't even want to bring it up. Remember, you guys, they sent me on some Leafs coverage. Remember? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fun interview. They, 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 it. It. You later. <laughs> they said, we don't want you sitting around and doing nothing for too long. So we're going to send you to Philly to cover the Leafs. And that's yeah. where you got to meet Gritty. How did that go? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. He is so he's such a character. And he actually. Yeah tried to involve me in this video where he was like doing this booty shake competition and I'm like I am working right now and I've got my clipboard and while if I had a beer in my hand and I was here as a fan I would totally participate I just didn't know how it would fly over with a TSN mic flash in my hand to be getting up there and I'm like what moves do I even pull so I was like that boring reporter who didn't engage with Gritty but I we did get the selfie Nice. Now, what what I do want to ask you is, we usually start by asking, how did how did you fall in love with hockey? For you, I want to ask, did you fall in love first with hockey or with reporting? Are you a reporter first or a hockey fan first? This is a really good question. So, Are there any questions only on LA? Yeah. Well, I I probably fell in love with reporting first, and I say that because not a lot of people know this, but my dad actually used to be a reporter with CBC. And he was host, he was radio and he hosted um, a radio show up in BC in Prince Rupert. And then he worked in management with CBC in Vancouver. And so I got to go to all these open houses when I was a kid um, to studios to like see Fred Penner. I don't know if you know who that is. No. No, you guys are so young, I guess. Fred Penner, or um, I remember meeting this guy, Stu Jeffries. He's now a big radio host in Toronto, but back then he, anyways, but what I'm saying is I got to see all this neat behind the scenes stuff of the broadcasting world. And I think that made me uh, interested in it. And then when I got into sports, I I mean, I was paying attention to sports um, growing up partially in Vancouver I was started off kind of a Canucks fan. I remember my first game at Pacific Coliseum watching 
uh, the Flames versus the Canucks. And like Trevor Linden was on the team, Pebble Burry. Nice. Yep. It was a really iconic team. And then we moved to Calgary and then watching the Flames a lot. And I loved Jerome McGinley. Probably my favorite player watching. And I think I'm, I can say that now because he's retired. You know, I wouldn't want to choose a current player. But yeah, so when I started playing sports and then having my dad's background, they kind of married the two eventually. And yeah, I got into sports reporting. Yeah, I mean, I, I think anyone uh, would have respect for Jerome McGinley as your answer, whether he's in the league, what team you're a fan of or whatever, just an absolute legend. Um, so you mentioned that uh, you kind of got into reporting and that from your dad. So was there ever a doubt in your mind that this is what you're going to do? Or you saw your dad doing this, you got involved with it at a young age, and you're just like, I know my path already. Or did you try other things? Or how obvious was it to you that this is something you were going to do as a career? Wasn't obvious at all, actually. Um, oh, I was okay. at UBC. I was doing like political science, international relations. I thought about going into law. I also did my master's in business because um, when I played oh, Team wow. Canada, we got... Um, you get carding as an athlete, but you also get free tuition to Canadian universities. If you're a national team athlete, they want to, you know, try to encourage you to get an education. So I could get that paid for by like the national team. And so I, but I just didn't know what I was going to do. And then there was this one moment at UBC that really sticks out to me. And we had won. So I played volleyball um, for the UBC Thunderbirds and yep. we had just won our first national championship in 30 years. It was like, we were an underdog team. We were like the Sens this year. We came out of nowhere, somehow made the playoffs, just go and win, <laughs> win our Stanley Cup, right? Youth sports championship. But um, when I got back to UBC, the, sorry, the championship was in Fredericton, New Brunswick. When we got back to UBC, I was so excited to open the newspaper and see, or, or see us on the cover, you know, celebrated. And it was the men's basketball team on the cover. And they had won this insignificant game. And we were on page seven, like in the Lame. corner. It was so bad. It was so disheartening. And so I, in that moment, I was like, you know what? I want to get into journalism to give women more of a platform. Nice. Yeah. Um, so that was a, a moment. And it's kind of ironic because now I cover, I mean, I cover a little bit of everything. I love when I get women's hockey assignments, but that's really important to me in my journalism career. Claire forgot to mention she was named player of the game in the championship game. In <laughs> I love that you know that. Come Not on, a big deal. research department on that one. Now, how, how close were you to, to going to an Olympics? Because I know you've been to a couple as a part of the Canadian Olympic Committee, but was that ever a thought that you could go and play volleyball at the Olympics? Yeah, we, I tried to target 2012. So that's when I was on the national team. I started on the Team Canada in 2009. And you're usually kind of committed to a quadrennial, you know, those four-year cycles. So 2012 was the goal. And then actually leading up to it, um, they only take 12 people. And I was part of the 16-person roster. And then when they, you know, whittled it down to 12 to go to the qualifier, I wasn't on that qualifier team, which was pretty heartbreaking. Politics. <laughs> but then um, on top of that, our team didn't qualify. We actually, the women's, indoor volleyball team hasn't qualified since 1996 wow. so it's been a big drought and i mean what's well, this is like a hockey podcast but volleyball is really tough because of 12 teams in the world go but volleyball's such a it's played at such a high level all over the world in asia in south america in europe so it's it's um really competitive and hard to get out of your zone and the united states um are always typically in the final or the bronze medal game. So it was really, it was hard to get out of what we call our Norseca zone, which is North America, Central Caribbean. Well, don't, uh, don't sell our, our podcast short. I think a lot of people are interested in, in learning about the people behind the scenes. And that's why we love interviewing uh, people who are reporters and front facing to the, the game itself, connecting us with the senators. And it's great to kind of peel back the curtain of your life and how you got here. And we already got our headline from you. You just said it's like the senators making the playoffs. So, Claire Hanna guarantees Senators make playoffs 2023. So we appreciate we you for that already. Um, now, where, where was your first job in, in journalism itself outside of, I know you mentioned that when you turned outside of volleyball, you were able to jump on with the Canadian Olympic Committee in that standpoint. I think it was what, 2012 and 2014 did you go to? Yeah, London and Sochi. Yeah. Okay, okay well, this is, hold on. I got to throw this question back at you. First oh. paid gig? Or first, um, like, gig where stuff was going to air, but you're just volunteering? Great question. We call that the, the purdy cycle. 
Uh, <laughs> so once you once you got paid, let's say, let's say your okay. first paid gig, because I'm sure that one stands out more. Yeah, probably Lloyd Minster. It was with Newcap at the time. I think they're with Stingray Television now, but um, Lloyd Minster, which is a border town of Alberta and Saskatchewan. And I know a lot of other people who have started there. Brian Mudrick, voice of the Montreal Canadiens, started there. I think Natasha Shnadosevsky had um, an internship there at one point. So yeah, that was my first uh, like full-time gig where I packed my bags and moved. So, and it was, I loved it. I loved it so much. There was... You would have days where I would anchor the 6 p.m. sportscast on the weekend and I'd get to work at 11 with and you like have this huge camera that weighs like 40 pounds. You've got your memory discs and I'd be driving from like all these little towns in Alberta and Saskatchewan to cover a midget triple A women's hockey team. And then this like senior B team like that had some significant game. And then I'd be like trying to get a little bit of this soccer college game and then a volleyball game. And then I'd rush back, edit it all. And then you like run to the anchor chair and anchor everything all in a day. It's it was so crazy how, and also these small town stations are run by 20 year olds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fresh <laughs> graduates running yeah. the show. Like the directors, everybody, except for our boss who um, she's great. Her name was Stacy Comer. She's still there, but Every, we were just, I'm like, if people only knew that these stations are literally being run by like 23, 24 year olds. <laughs> yeah, I don't think people fully appreciate what goes on behind local news. Because like you said, it, a lot of the time it's one person doing the filming, doing the, the stand up, editing it, and finalizing all of it. And that's all and one person running it. around. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing your, I'm like doing my makeup while I'm trying to send in the edits and stuff like that. Like it was yeah. crazy. Anyways, that's awesome. Well, all you had to say for Lloyd Minster is the hometown of Wade Redden. Come on, you'll, oh, yes. you'll, true. You yes. get all Sens fans' ears perked up for that one. Now, to to bring this to to the Sens in a sense, or at least your current role with TSN, how much did did that small town journalism help you when you're at more of a big stage? And whether it was your next step, I mean, in Regina covering the Pats or whatever it may be, does it almost make it feel like it's just a sport? Because I feel like some people have the sense it's like, oh, my God, it's the NHL. It's this enormous thing. But coming up, growing from the lower levels, does it make it feel like when you're watching like a Brady Kachuk, a Tim Stutz, so these big names, these really high paid players, it's just like, oh, they're just playing hockey. It's the same coverage for me as it was when it was just midget AAA. Okay, I've never actually thought about it that way, Ross, but totally, you totally nailed it. I don't, I don't truthfully get that ahead of it in my brain that it's the NHL because I have covered so many hockey games at so many random levels. And I remember even one year, um, the Carolina Hurricanes, ooh, who were they playing? There was, there was an exhibition game in Saskatoon and we were like, oh my gosh, there's an NHL t- like game here. And I was a little nervous going into the locker room. And I don't know, there weren't, there weren't that many other reporters there. So I was just navigating what you do in an NHL locker room. Um, but I was like, this isn't that different at the end of the day. It's just players who are trying to win a game. Some of them get paid way more. Some of them are just trying to make the WHL. Some of them are just trying to make the SJHL. Um, but it was totally the same sport. And What I love about having worked through, let's call it the milk run, is I've gotten to know some players who are now big names. I covered Kirby Doc in his very first WHL game ever and his first WHL goal and watching him, you know, with the Saskatoon Blades. I covered Connor Bedard in his first season with the Pats. And even when he got the exceptional player status or I remember I reached out to the Pats to do an interview with him because the year he got exceptional player status in the WHL was the year that COVID took over. So he didn't even really get to take advantage of his 15 year old year in play. And so at one point we hadn't talked to him for months and I'm like, what's he doing? So I reached out to them and they're like, okay, Claire, we're going to give you the scoop. He's actually going to play in Sweden. And I'm like, no way. So I was talking to him on like FaceTime when he was in Vancouver, getting ready to go to Sweden to play for HV71 and like getting to make those relationships with players before they've even made the NHL is really special. And I'll give um, a shout out to Parker Kelly because Parker played for the Prince Albert Raiders when I was working in Saskatoon and we didn't make as many trips as we would have liked to Prince Albert. Just, just for people to know, like Prince Albert's two hours away from Saskatoon. There's no airport there. It's like a journey playing there in the WHL. 
like you are doing a lot of bus trips and that's where Parker Kelly played. But, um, you know, I remember him and he was such a stud with the Prince Albert Raiders. And I don't know, just getting to watch those guys and then cover them in the NHL, you feel like you've been a journeyman with them. That's almost how the credibility of this show started where we would own, like, we wouldn't have the gall or, or whatever to even ask the Sens for any of their players or whatever to come on the show. So we would mine the prospect field and, and say, uh, Hey, Drake Batherson was playing in Cape Breton at the time. So we'd reach out to the, to the screaming Eagles and be like, Hey, can we chat with, uh, with Drake or, you know, Joey Decord was one of the first guys to come on. And then as they grow into big players, we kind of use that credibility to say, Hey, we had them on when they were a kid. And, <laughs> And, you know, it kind of it kind of grows from there. Or Timmy, right after he got drafted, I just reached out to every team that the Senators drafted from. And sure enough, like Moncton didn't get back to me about Philip Daus, but they just gave me Timmy's number and said, hey, why don't you just have him yeah. on? So it's just one of those things where as you grow, it, it kind of grows with them. I, I like that thought process. And it kind of maybe influences people that you don't always have to go for the big fish right away. And you, everyone wants the, the success and wants it now or whatnot. And it's almost your your uh, storyline is almost like the definition of how success is built on it. And with the foundation of the tools that you learned along the way. So no, I have a ton of respect for how you've gotten to the position you have now at TSN. How did that come up? I know you were, you were at CTV, right? Or, or were you still at global at the time? Or if CTV mm-hmm. I imagine would be easier to transfer it within the bell umbrella. Exactly. Yeah. So my last job before coming here to Ottawa was with CTV in Regina and, um, I took, so I, before that been with global in Saskatoon and I just kind of felt like, I don't know, it wasn't the best, not the best fit, but I was like, where can I go from here? Because global doesn't have a national sports, um, you know, center or anything like that. And so I was trying to make connections and I, you know, as one should do in the community in the broadcast world. And um, eventually I found out that Lee Jones, who used to be the sports reporter with CTV in Regina, was going to be starting as the anchor for the 6 p.m. news. So that sports job was opening up. And I remember like going for it hard. And people were like, why would you move from Saskatoon to Regina? And I'm like, well, first of all, they've got the riders and there's the chance of doing TSN work. Like to me, I'm like, how is this not a no brainer? Like I would, I want to move there. But with the CTV Regina job, because there's no bureau reporter. So, you know, my position, I think technically in Ottawa is the Ottawa bureau chief. There's no bureau person in Regina, but because the CFL is such a big property of TSN, they can't not have somebody there covering the riders. So you sort of get this hybrid CTV kind of TSN role. Okay. So sometimes if there was a big story, I remember Zach Caleros in my first year, he had those big concussion issues. So they would sometimes be like, okay, Claire, can you file a TSN story? Or I would, I would work the sidelines um, in my first year, which was a job that I didn't, I don't know even how I found out. I was just on the schedule. I'm like, what? There wasn't even a phone call. Like you didn't tell me I was going to get the sidelines. I just got <laughs> email the schedule and I'm on nice. it. It's like, the coolest moment, but I wish it had almost been a bit more of like a phone call, like Claire, you've got this job, you know, but um, that was my foot in the door doing a little bit of TSN work in Regina. Um, and they'd sometimes send me to cover a game in Winnipeg when Sarah Orleski was off doing figure skating or another assignment. So that was the way to kind of get myself known a bit. And, and then, yeah. And then I just kept networking and when jobs came up, they called me. Hope you're enjoying our chat with Claire. We'll get right back to it. But first, can I tell you a quick word about our friends at Built Bar? If you haven't tried Built Bar Puffs yet, you're depriving yourself from one of life's greatest joys. I don't say that lightly. Guess what? New flavor alert. Get ready. It's delicious, indulgent cookie dough covered in chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again. Just remember that all Built Bars are covered in 100% chocolate. Let me introduce you to cookie dough chunk puffs with a light texture and chewy. Real cookie dough chunks, and of course, they're covered in all chocolate. All the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it. Plus, get this and believe it, it's healthy for you. Cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories, and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. Go to Built.com and snag a Built Bar puff for you and for maybe your friends. You can even get them to your family. It's a great gift, and also... Have I mentioned that these puffs are literally a protein-infused marshmallow? I feel like that needs to be a part of the lead here. You're going to love them whether you need a snack for your workout, a late-night treat, or grabbing a quick bite on the road. We know everybody's lives are back to being busy. 
Built is the perfect protein bar, and they taste better than a candy bar. Ditch the calories, the fat, and the sugar, and grab yourself a Built Bar. The offer is, if you go to Built.com and use promo code LOCKEDON15, you'll get 15% off your next order. Use promo code LOCKEDON15 for 15% off your next order at Built.com. All right, now back to our conversation with Claire Hanna. So you end up uh, getting the job in Ottawa, and when you're getting here and you are you know you're going to cover the Sens, what's your kind of opinion and knowledge of the Sens before you started working uh, with the team and covering them? What was your, what was your stance on them? Daniel Alfredson. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, no, I knew, obviously I knew some of the big names. I remembered the big bankrupt season, actually, when um, I'd been, I think I was in high school and I remember having a conversation with some buddies at school in terms of like, these players aren't getting paid right now. So why would they even play? And then we got into this like meta discussion of, well, are you even playing for the current season? Or are you just paying, playing for your future contract? Sure. And like, oh, well, maybe these guys are playing so hard because they want the money in the future with different teams. Yeah. Anyways, so that was a big discussion. And I think that was the team back in 2003 yep. that was kind of going or 2002 going bankrupt. So, um, yeah, familiarity with that. And but it, to be completely honest, you guys, like I sh- maybe I shouldn't admit this, like most of my NHL consumption was out West. Like those are just the games that were on at the right times for me. So I didn't watch a lot of Eastern games and that was just cause yeah, of where I was growing up. So it was, I read Chris Stevenson's book, like 99 things you need to know okay. to be a Sanders fan. I wish I had it. It's in my other room. Yeah. Or hundred things, not 99. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you know, but I, Great that's book. one. That's one area I'm always going to be a little insecure about is just my historical knowledge of the sense because I wasn't living in the city or like knowing what that energy was like back in 2007, things like that. Oh, it was unbelievable. And you mentioned like they went through bankruptcy. I just looked it up. It was January of 2003. They won the president's (laughs) trophy that year for most points in the NHL. That's insane. Wow. (laughs) The timing of that and how it all worked out unreal so what you mentioned kind of your your fast track to learning about this team cj's book but over over the course of you start covering the team to where you're at now where i mean you just look like a natural out there not that you didn't before but how was the how was the learning curve in terms of like i'm sure you you leaned on guys like bruce garriock who'd been covering the team for 30 years and and having meth up in the booth like what's the what's the relationship like uh with you guys over what is it like 114 section where you guys have your little (laughs) yeah well okay still lean on everybody a lot i think it's like a team in a way because I'll, or, you know, who's been really helpful, um, Gord Wilson and Dean Brown. Um, that, yeah, like last year, because we couldn't sit in, we could only sit in one section. I would talk to them a lot about a lot of players. And I still ask them a lot of questions like, wait, Dean, like 17, that's really Greg, you know, when he first, because I was like, we hadn't seen his number in a long time, things like that, or just um, picking out players online rushes, power plays. So I talked to those guys a lot, but the relationship 114, like, our studio is wicked. Nice. We can just yeah. shoot the shit about whatever. And I don't know. I, I sometimes will ask Mark Mathod about players or scenarios because I'll be honest, a lot of things are similar to when I played volleyball, you know, like dealing with an injury, coming back from it or getting benched for partying or whatever you want to call it. Like we all have had similar scenarios happen, but it's sometimes, you know, like on the four check, I'll be like, Mark, can we explain why you might be doing this in the corner rather than this, that I will never understand because I've never put the pads on and and played in a hockey game. And I want to almost play in a pickup game so that I know what it's like, but I, I don't know. I feel like I'll just stick to my cross country skiing. Anybody <laughs> who has a pro or sorry, not pro, an amateur hockey team, men's, women's, <laughs> Please let us know in the comments. We're going to get Claire all outfitted at play against sports and, and we'll have some fun. Let, out. Let's get her to net Ross. She should be a goalie. This is a goalie friendly show. Let's get you in the crease. I think, I think I would be a really good goalie to be honest. All right. Awesome. Okay? I think I'd be fearless right. in there. 
And I mean, the volleyball stance is pretty close to a goalie stance, right? Knees bent, chest up, ready to go. I was like a, a goalie in volleyball, you know, making sure the ball never hit the floor, playing good okay. defense. Yeah. I feel like it's just m- mentally, I'm I'm dialed. All right. Well, now you're already a friend of the show, goalie friendly show, right here. What's the uh, what's the funniest thing you've seen Math get upset about? Like, did his cookie crumble the wrong oh, way? Yeah. Was coffee not cold enough. Okay, he went to Farm Boy once, and I guess he had to tape something, and he was, like, super pissed that his, um, like, egg wrap was probably going to be soggy and and cold by the time he was going to get it. But he wasn't even that mad. There's, oh, I wish I, I wish I had better memory recall, because he's had some moments where he was, like, hilariously upset, and I'm like, really? Who cares? Just let oh, it go. Yeah, that's mad. It's yeah. awesome. That, that's like what what's what's pissing math off today what's awesome yeah. I can't find out that, on Friday. that should be our segment actually what's pissing you off today yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll do that. that with ray ferrero it was something similar to that right the, a year or two ago pilsy like what's yeah. bugging Ray or something i think it was something on like that yeah i forget yeah but that's oh, uh that's the premise yeah so claire nice little holiday for you in the middle of the season getting up to anything yeah, I'm I'm going to Phoenix and um, just taking in a little bit of golf. I might golf. I've never been to Top Golf. Have you guys done that? No, but it yeah. looks real. You have, right? Yeah, I'm going to Vegas to to do it again. It's it's an absolute blast. Like I'm not a golf guy. I could care less about golf, but Top Golf is a lot of fun. It's it's just a good uh, afternoon. That's for sure. Okay. Oh, afternoon better than going in the evening. Uh I mean, e- either either time is good, but uh, like it's a good afternoon to break your day up. Okay, in that's May. a good point. Okay, yeah. I like that. Because we're like, right now, we're like, when do we go? Evening or afternoon? I like the afternoon one. Yeah, in the yeah. desert. Yeah. Hopefully watch a bit of... So I'm going there for Super Bowl week, but I'm not going to the game. And then I'll get a bit of waste management in. And actually, my friend's husband plays. He's got his PGA card. And nice. so we're hoping to like maybe get into some fun like golfer events, but you never know. Hell yeah. Well, I mean, that's the tournament you want to be at if fun is at the yeah. top of the market, it's right? It's the 16th hole, right? That's where you're trying to get to. Yeah, exactly. But I, I have to be back for the Oilers game um, on February 11th. So I, it's going to be cut short a bit. Yeah, fair enough. No, but that's it the... sends rule all, right? Well, you're telling us. We're, we're yeah. going for my bachelor party at the end of the month. We're bringing our little roadcaster. We're going to do the postcast from the beach in Cabo. We're, we'll be ready, though. Oh my gosh. So when are you guys going to be at your next Sens game? February 17th. We showed you the poster. The Great sneak question. Oh, that's the next one. Okay. Yep. Sounds yeah. good. We'll be coming by 114 to see you. I, I need to check, check math. Get them all upset. Get them all worked up. Wait, I want to look. I'm looking at my schedule. Oh, that's a TSN game. I was going to say bring me a beer otherwise. Oh, no. TSN game, though. You're going to have us on in intermission? We'll get some hot takes <laughs> going. I'll tell Brucey to move, move to the side. He'll be all right. <laughs> Well, question period, and what would you guys, what would you want your segment called? Answer period. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like that. Man, I don't know. We, we have a nice complicated history with Bruce. We, we, had, uh, we had a little block fest with him a couple years ago, but we buried the hatchet. I took yeah. him out to the Forks in Winnipeg when, when the, they were out here in December, and we, oh. had, a really nice, we had a really nice we're chat. Now. So now we're all so good. Lovely. It's all love. It's all love. No, you guys have a great crew there at the TSN. Creature hangs out with you guys, I bet, too. Hey. Oh, all the time. He films a lot of my TikToks, actually. Oh, nice. yeah? Yeah. Any, any credit in, in the little corner? He, he says like... he wants to remain just – he's okay being a background member. Wow. All right. Well, I he just shout outs like this, I think he appreciates. But he doesn't, yeah. he doesn't need credit. Exactly. I think it was after the home opener, we we met up with him at one of the bars in, in yeah. Canada with AJ Jackieback. Oh, yeah, nice. Dudes. You yeah, should get him to film a TikTok for you. You guys should do like a fun dance one. Or what's that? I want to dance, dance, dance with my... I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to do that. like that <laughs> well, awful one that everybody has done. We'll leave the dancing to you. <laughs> exactly. I feel like you're a TikTok superstar, no? No, no, no. I just mostly post videos of, honestly, like Tim Stutzla working on his slap shot or something like that. There's <laughs> one time. Like I just... That's where I, my, my uh, bread is buttered. I get all the views when I just post hockey videos. So I stick to that. I was going to say, we could give you like uh, a crash course of Sen's history, like a meaningless game in, in January of 2012. And then you in exchange could help us learn TikTok because all we do is post these like little game recaps, no editing, nothing. 
I don't know how TikTok works. All I know is to, to hit upload and then the the one button. How are you doing with views? Uh, not great. Maybe like 200 each. You got to do a couple hashtags. Hashtag sends, hashtag NHL, hashtag hockey. And then that's going to boost you up a bit. At Claire Hanna. Don't tag me. I don't think that's going to help. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, hey, Claire, we really appreciate your time. Pills, you got any final questions, some hard-hitting questions for our journalist friend here? No, I'll, I'll lob a softball for you so you can hit it out of the park as you leave. What has been your favorite send story to cover so far? What's what's the one you had the most fun with? Great question. Oh, oh, well, it might, it's, it's like that. Actually, this might be not the answer you're looking for, but it was the Austin Watson one when he was talking about his sobriety. Yeah, for sure. Massive yeah, story. Like, he just had his four years. Uh, last yeah, week. exactly. And it was just like, it was really, I, I thought he was so open and so vulnerable. And those stories, I think, help more people because I, I got messages, and I'm sure Austin did after, from people I didn't know on my website or on Twitter, just being like, oh my gosh, I've been sober for this many years. It's so great to hear somebody else talk about it too. Like, these are parts of the game we don't hear about. And I'm like, I never get messages when we do a story about the power play. So the, that story was really meaningful. I love that. Follow up. What's a story you want to do about this team or something that you have in the works that now when it actually <laughs> happens down the road, everybody's like, oh, I heard Claire talking about that on LOS. Okay. It's so funny. I was just putting a pitch together, but I don't know if I want to tell it here because then maybe somebody else will take it. But there's... um, We actually have a trademark with our show that if you say it here, nobody can or else we berate them online for years. (laughs) So I'm thinking there... Um, I actually tweeted this photo out, but I put it on my Instagram when it happened last week. But there was this 15 minute conversation with DJ Smith, Claude Giroux and Alex Debrinkit. We want to know more about this. Yes. Yes. And it was like, we asked DJ Smith about it, but we were all joking. Oh, they're like fighting whether you put pineapple on pizza or they're fighting about this. Like we just had all these different scenarios and I'm kind of trying to pitch a story about like a satirical story where we talk about what they might've been talking about and get Claude Giroux and Alex to have fun with it. But it really depends on them and, and then kind of make it serious because they've, they've won four straight since that discussion. Like what was the discussion to me? That's, that's the heart of the end season turnaround right now. It certainly is. DJ, what do you think about that story? Do you like it? Yes. (laughs) Yes. So there you go. DJ Smith is in. (laughs) 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 <laughs> Claire, we really appreciate you, Evan. You're already following her on Instagram. Cla Hannah, Clay Hannah, C L A Hannah. How do you say Clahanna. that? Cla Hannah, yeah, yeah, Cla Hannah, Cla Hannah. I like that. And then obviously on Twitter, Claire Hannah. Claire, we really appreciate it's it. Cla Hannah, you know- it's, it's Cla Hannah everywhere on Twitter too. Really, Jesus. Yeah, just I really quick it. anecdote here. If you follow. Um, if you're on Twitter and you search me, there's an Irish politician named Claire Hanna. We spell it the exact same way. We actually look similar. She gets so many of my emails and <laughs> I get her email. So people will be like, I'm so upset with how things are going in Belfast and like da da da. And I'm like, wrong, Claire Hanna. <laughs> Nice. It's like there's a, there's a Gary Galley on Twitter, and I might know this because I might have tweeted at him the other day. And um, you go to it, it's a locked account. It goes, I am not the hockey commentator. Leave me alone. That's his bio. <laughs> so, no, it happens to the best of us. Hey, we always say that when we mess up early, it's dash one on the first shift. With me messing up your Twitter, I'll call it, I'm out there with the empty net, and I get scored on. That's that's where that comes out here. Oh, dash it's okay. Me. But we very much appreciate your time. I know you're busy. We And as you think we're busy, we're not. But we need to do this again down the road. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is fun. All right, Pilsy. Thanks, Claire. That was a great conversation, eh? Yeah, finally, we were able to sit down and chat with Claire as we were trying to make schedules work for a while. And I'm glad we did. It was well worth the wait. She's uh, a lot of fun. And I'm glad someone like her is covering the Ottawa Senators to really kind of boost up all these great stories we have. No question. And I loved what, what she said there about, you know, working her way up. And I know you touched on it before we went in, but it, it just it, it rings true that hard work is is the only answer. There's no shortcuts to getting onto the biggest stage. And she is a living example 
of going through all these small towns and living all over the country while chasing a dream that, I mean, she's doing a fantastic job. So we'll have her back on. There's no question about that. Pilsy, what the heck are we going to do? 11 days until the next Senators game, February 11th against the Edmonton Oilers. That's a long time. Well, I can tell you what we're going to do for the next couple days, Ross. What? We're going to continue to have great TSN guests on as we'll continue our row here. How about Dave Poolin? Tomorrow, Pooley. We're so ch- uh, excited to chat with him. He's got such good insight. And then our good friend, Mark Mathot, Claire's uh, partner at TSN, her co-host. So this is going to be a great week for interviews. And we're going to keep the interviews rolling throughout this time as, yes, the Sens hockey is taking a break for now, but LOSP continues. The show must go on, Ross. Pilsy, I know it's maybe faux pas to do it at this point in the season, knowing where things are at, but I'm going to do it anyways. I'm pulling it up right We're doing here. It. This is where things stand right now in the wild card picture. The Sens jumped over Philadelphia and Detroit with their win last night. Point percentage be damned in points. Have jumped over both of them. Right now, the only game remaining before the All-Star break of all these teams shown are the Buffalo Sabres. If they lose tonight, so cheer for the Carolina Hurricanes, then the the high watermark is 57 to make playoffs right now. Pittsburgh is in that spot. The Ottawa Senators, six points back, which really doesn't even sound like that much. The only problem is these three-point games and the lack of divisional. Well, divisional doesn't really matter. Ottawa's going more so with... Four metropolitan, three metropolitan teams in the yeah. mix, there and two Atlantic Division teams. But Ottawa's got Florida, I think, once or twice more, and obviously the Islanders are coming up on the schedule as well. So it really just kind of puts into perspective if you had held the Penguins to less than three out of four points in that back-to-back there last week, things could be looking a little bit different right now. Big but time. all 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 things considered, I think having Having them ahead of Philly and Detroit certainly helps kind of where they're at. Where you you saw before it was like Ottawa, Montreal, Columbus at the bottom. You're like, are you serious? At least now it's like, look, I know that the the road hasn't been straight. It's been very windy, lots of dips and and turns. It's like you're driving in a mountain town, right? Just up, down, side to side. It hasn't been easy, but you look at where they are now at, at a big pause in the season. And they're probably like four or five points behind my expectation. That's two wins. So I think all in all, it's it's great to kind of live and die with the highs and lows of this team. But if you look at where they're at in terms of where you should have realistically expected them going into the season, they're not very far back from where you think. And look, even two of the teams ahead of them right now have played two more games. Yeah, that's massive. I mean, this four-game win streak is so huge because, Ross, take away eight points from the Sens 51 and you're not you're behind the Habs at that point so this has been a huge huge boost heading into the break and uh, I've said it a couple times uh, it feels like the season had been over but there's there's still a little bit of light shining through that door I've started closing the door on the season but the light is shining through the crack there so Martian uh, is going to tap the believe sign and we're going to keep things going here unreal Four straight wins. The vibes remain high. There's still some some things you want to see different. I didn't think they played necessarily very well last night. And I guess I'm burying the lead there. Like, I mean, they they looked like the Habs in the third period in Ottawa. Like they had what six shots, but when two of those six shots go in, it's a little bit better. If you want more on that game, make sure you check out the postcast. Yep. We went an hour. We had 400 people live. There's already 1,800 awesome. views on it. Great to see the the team win, and when the postcast when the team wins, the postcast just explodes, and we love to see that. But we're here, win, lose, or draw, and we appreciate all the support. We would love to see you at our live show at the Glebe Central Pub. Yes. It's going to be an absolute time, Pilsy. Enjoy the rest of the day. You got any final thoughts? Final thoughts is yeah, just revel, soak in this four game win streak because the Senators will not lose a game for the next ten days. So. We're riding this win win streak for a little while here, Ross. Absolutely, but we're not going anywhere. We'll be back tomorrow with Dave Poole and Friday with Mark Mathot, and then we'll reload. 
for next week. Maybe get some prospects on and catch up with how their season's going. We should do a prospect roundup as well because we haven't done one in a couple in a in a few weeks. So we'll see what's going on. Like Zach Ostapchuk, how is he fitting in with the yep. Winnipeg Ice and a whole lot more. But for today, we say goodbye. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan, and this has been the Locked On Senators Podcast. Your team every day. <laughs>